Hey everyone, Jordan here from Zenata Consulting. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at a better method for taking lead form data and capturing into the CRM that improves upon the traditional method of just capturing the data straight into the leads module or straight into the contacts module. Before we get started though, don't forget to hit that like button and ring that subscription bell. Let's dive in. We're going to start today by taking a look at the end result of this design solution, how it looks in your CRM and your leaving contacts modules, as well as why it provides an additional value and why you might want to consider implementing it in your own CRM. Then we're going to take a look at the individual components, starting with the module that was created as a custom module to capture the web form information, then the workflow rule with the code that processes those form submissions, and then finally, the workflow rules and email notifications that go into notifying the users about those form submissions. So without further ado, let's take a look at the end result of what the solution is going to look like. Okay, so the end result once you've gotten this implemented is that if you go to either the leads module or the contacts module, once you've opened up a specific lead, you will have a related list on the left hand side that shows you all of your web form submissions. So in this example of this specific lead, you can see that we've got two form submissions that happened today, one earlier in the day, one later. And in those web form submissions, I can see that one of them was a free samples form that was filled out and one of them with a contact form. They were both filled out for this contact's email address with this phone number, and they left individual messages for each of those, one asking for a new set of samples and one asking for some technical support. The obvious value to this, as opposed to just having each form create a lead or update a lead, is now you get the full history of not just the fact that they filled a form and became a lead, but they filled out this specific form with these pieces of information and maybe they've gone through multiple iterations of forms and you can see that entire history rather than just having is it a lead or is it not a lead high value for this obviously in the initial version of crm you have a lead source and you can have where did this lead come from and that's great if you just want the first touch or the last touch but if you want true marketing attribution to have more flexibility now I can see every single touch point along this potential customer's path from a lead all the way to a contact and a customer, meaning that I see every form they filled out in their entire life cycle. And in that form history, I can say, you know, if this lead form came from a specific marketing page, you know, marketing campaign pushed them to this page and they filled out this form, I'll be able to see all of that history and I could track, for example, if that lead filled out this form on February 23rd, I want to look at the deals that we closed for this lead before and after that date and did pushing them through this marketing effort improve our sales. That's would be valuable to know. In addition for the sales team, it's very, very beneficial to have it notify them when a form is filled out by a lead that already is in the system. The way that this solution is designed is if someone fills out a web form, that web form is going to blow into this web form submissions area. If the lead already exists or the contact already exists, it will notify the lead and or contact owner to let them know a record they're already managing has submitted a new form. In traditional methods of just upserting the record, you wouldn't necessarily know that a new form was submitted unless you took that completely off to the side. And it would just tell you that a form was submitted, not a new lead has submitted versus an existing lead has submitted. So there's a lot of value here to capturing the web form data first, deciding if that lead or contact already exists or not. And if they don't exist in your system yet, then you create a lead. So that's the general goal here. And we can use any set of forms to flow into here. For example, if I was to put in um, my own information, and obviously I'm going to put in a fake phone number here just so that not everyone who is on YouTube has my phone number. If I go ahead and submit this form and I have it integrated properly, this represents any form on your website, any form out in your process that you have. It would then flow in and it would create a lead if that lead did not already exist. So if I go ahead and refresh the page now, you can see I've got a new lead that was created. And on that new lead that was created, we've got this lovely web form submission link to it. So I can see that Jordan Poole filled out the contact form. This is their email and their phone number. This is the message they sent when they filled out the form. And now the, the sales associate can go ahead and work this lead. Let's hop in and take a look next at the first piece of building the solution, which is the web form submission custom module that's actually going to capture all of this form data. 
So over here, we have a custom module that I built called Web Form Submissions. And inside this module, what you essentially want to do is create the module that have a field in the record for every single field that might be captured from any of your forms. When I created this custom module, I went ahead and set this to be not an auto number, just a naming convention for the form. And then the forms that I was getting the ring name had first name, last name, email, and phone number, as well as occasionally a message field. So I had to make sure I created a custom field on this module to capture each of those pieces of information. Next, you need to add a lookup field for each of the different records that the form submissions might get related to. So in this case, for me, it was either going to be a lead or a contact that the form was going to be in relation to because my forms are all about people. They're not about deals or accounts or properties or anything like that. So I had to create a lookup field for the related lead and the related contact. And finally, I created two fields, one, a checkbox called existing lead and another, a checkbox called existing contact. The purpose of this part of the solution is that when a new form submission comes in, I'm going to have a workflow with code that's going to evaluate if this already exists as a person in my database. So it's going to take the email address and say, does this email address exist in my contacts? If so, check this box. If not, check to see if it exists in the leads. If it does exist in the leads, check this box. If neither of these things are true, then we need to create a new lead because this is the first time this person has interacted with us through a film. By having these checkboxes, what I'm then able to do is say, if the existing contact box gets checked off and it's related to a contact, or in this case, if the existing lead checkbox got checked off and it was existed and it was related to a lead, notify the lead owner or the contact owner that someone they're already working with has submitted a form and here's the details of that form so that if it's an existing customer or existing lead, they're actively working, they know that person's engaged right now they need help with a specific thing and it allows them to kind of latch on to that and do their job better. To do this, if you're not familiar, you just need to go in the setup area and then modules and fields, create a new module and then create all of the individual fields that I just mentioned before. If you need more help on or guidance, just in general on creating these types of modules, what field types to select, I'd be happy to help you with that, but this video is more of a general overview. So just drop those notes in the comment section and we'd be happy to answer them when we get a chance. So the next thing we're going to want to look at is now that we've got this module set up, we need to decide what to do with these records when they come in. So we're going to hop over to the workflow rules area and create a workflow rule to run some code that processes these. So now I'm in the workflow rules area and I've gone ahead and filtered to just show me the workflow rules that have been created for web form submissions specifically. And the first one that needed to be created is this one here that I've called new web form process lead. This is basically a workflow rule that's going to trigger whenever a new web form submission record gets created so that it can then take that information from that web form submission and decide what to do with it. So for this, the easiest way to do this is with custom code. If you're not familiar with Deluge, I highly recommend checking out the tutorials that Greg on our team has done on how to get started with Deluge and how to do the basics. This code is actually fairly straightforward. And I imagine once you've watched Greg's tutorial videos, there's a set of them you should be super comfortable being able to write this type of code. But if I go into this custom code really quickly and just give you an overview, essentially the logic of it is we're going to assume that there is no existing lead or existing contact. And then we're going to go through and decide if that's true. So what we end up doing is grabbing the details of this form, including the email, phone number, first name, last name, and message. Then if they gave us an email, which is necessary for us to identify an existing record. If we do have an email address in that form, then we need to see if there's a contact that has that email. If there are contacts or at least one contact that has an email that matches this form submission, then we need to say, yes, there is an existing contact. And we're going to go ahead and relate to that contact to this form submission. If there isn't an existing contact, now we're going to do the same search on leads to see if that email exists in leads. If the email exists in leads, then again, we're going to want to mark the existing lead as true and relate that lead to the form submission. And then finally, if we have a lead ID and a contact ID, they're both null, meaning we didn't find a lead, we didn't find a contact. Now we need to create one because we don't have a lead or a contact for this form submission. So here we just go ahead and set up the lead map, put in all of the details we'd want to create on this lead, the first name, last name, phone number, email, etc. 
And then we create the lead. And very importantly, we tell it to trigger workflow, meaning there are going to be other rules that happen after a lead is created. Make sure you follow those rules. Then we grab the ID of the lead that was created and toss it back onto the web form submission. And that's basically all the logic is. It's just, do we have a contact? Yes or no. If we don't, do we have a lead? Yes or no. If we don't, create a lead. All of that to get to the end result of letting the web form submission know what record it should be related to and if that record was existing or new. And that is the capture. In order for records to actually get into this web form submissions module, you just want to make sure that every single form you integrate into the CRM, instead of going integrated into the leads module or integrated into the contacts module, you now integrate it into the web form submissions module and let this workflow rule put it where it belongs. That is fairly straightforward, but if you're not familiar with how to integrate forms into the CRM and put it where you want it, definitely check out another video I did, which is specifically on the main methods you can use to capture web forms into the CRM. I go through all the different options. One of the options I go through is specifically forms that have built in integrations with the CRM. Some of those will only integrate with leads and contacts. In that case, you don't want to use those integrations with this solution. Instead, you want to use the webhook solution that I go over in that video. We'll either pop that video up on the screen here, or we'll drop it in the description for you. But definitely check out that video if you're unfamiliar with how to generally capture form data into the CRM. Now that you've got a custom module and you've got code in here that's going to process the data coming from these forms, the next step is how do we make sure our sales team and users are notified about these activities so that they know to go check that lead or go check that contact? So let's take a look at that. So when we were talking about creating the web form submissions module, I had referenced two checkbox fields, the existing lead and the existing contact checkbox. This is where these are going to come into play. So you can see as an example with leads, if I had a web form submission that came in and I identified that there was already an existing lead in the database that matched that email address, I would take that lead, link it to the web form submission, and I would also select that existing lead checkbox. Then what you want to do is create a workflow rule that says on the web form submissions module, when the existing lead box is modified to be selected, send an email notification. And the email notification essentially is going to be, if you go into who you're sending it to, change it from web form submission to the related lead lookup field, and then choose the owner of that lead or what have you. So you can see that's what I've done here is I've chosen the owner of the related lead. So that means whoever is assigned to that lead is who is going to get this email notification. Then you just have to go ahead and build up an email template. In this case, I created a very simple email template that just says one of your leads and then the lead name I has submitted a new form with the following details. So let's know you have, you have a lead, they've submitted a form. It was this form name. This is their first and last name. This is their email. This is their phone. This is the message they sent. And then I give them a quick button that will jump them directly to the lead in the CRM. And then you create a second workflow rule for existing contact. It does the exact same thing. If the existing contact checkbox is checked off, we're going to send an email to the owner of the contact record that tells them one of your contacts has submitted a form. Here are the details. Click here to go view the contact. In order to build those email templates, all I had to do was go into settings go under the templates area inside of the settings, which is right here. And under specifically email templates, under email templates, I just went and created these two templates. Because these are internal notifications, I just chose to choose the module that I was notifying based on, which in this case is the web form submissions module. And I chose to just use a blank empty template and then go build out that email template with all of the autofilling fields. For the button, if you're not familiar with how to have a button, and an email notification that takes you directly to the record it's referencing. Essentially what you want to do here is first go into the main text area here and you need to paste in a link of what the CRM record would, would look like. So for example, if I go to crm.simple.com and I open up a lead record as an example, let's pretend this was the email notification for leads. If you go over to the leads module here, open up any lead, and then in the URL here, you'll see that it's opening this, this URL that has slash lead slash and then an ID number. If you just copy that URL 
put it into an email template here, backspace the ID so that the ID isn't there, and then type in the pound key, which will bring you the merge fields. And don't choose the web form submission ID, but choose the ID of the record to be opening. So in this case, I need to go to the related lead and then the lead ID. This link now would open you directly to that lead because it's the, the CRM leads link with the dynamic merge of what the lead we're talking about specifically. And then if you then take that link and just copy or cut it and then take a button and drag a button onto the email template, you can then just take that link and put it right into the button and call this, you know, open lead. This button now is a nice, visually pretty button right inside the email template that if the user who gets the email clicks that, will open them into the CRM straight to that lead. So very convenient little trick that you're not aware of that. So you gotta go in, build these email templates, and then once those email templates are both built for the web form submission module, you can go create the two workflow rules that will notify the users about these two things. The third case that isn't covered by those two workflow rules is if a new lead comes in, you want to send a notification to the new lead owner that they have a new lead. That use case is covered by generic just lead assignment notifications that are likely turned on in your CRM. But if you do need to create or want to create a custom email notification for new leads being assigned to a user, you absolutely can. You would just need to follow the same process, except this time you would create an email template for the leads module because it's on lead creation. And then you would have to create a workflow rule triggering from the leads module on create send this email notification to the lead owner. And that's all there is to it. We hope you found this video useful. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also in the description below, you will find other useful links, including our resource library that includes this video and more for every Zoho product, as well as a link to Club Zanata, which is a free community where we share code snippets, answer questions, upcoming events, and more. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.